This is a video about female fertility after lymphoma. So what we're going to discuss is how the treatments for lymphoma might affect your fertility and then ways that you might, uh, things that you might do to protect your fertility before you start treatments. And then finally, we're, we're going to discuss ways that you might have your fertility assessed and what you can do about it uh, down the road when you've recovered from the treatment and the disease itself. So one of the key treatments for lymphoma is going to be chemotherapy, and that actually varies a lot in whether it might affect your fertility. The key issue with female fertility is all the eggs you have, you made before you were even born. So you have your most eggs in your ovaries when your mum was about 17 weeks pregnant with you. And then that number goes down and down through life until you're just about running out, and that's what the menopause um, means. You effectively just about run out of eggs. The problems with chemotherapy is that it damages dividing cells, and that's how it cures you of the disease, but it also affects the cells around the egg and the egg itself that are dividing and growing and producing the hormones and, of course, enabling your fertility. So many therapies will have an effect on how your ovaries are working, and the issue is whether it's going to have a permanent effect or whether it's just going to be temporary. And in just about all women, most chemotherapies will have a temporary effect on how well your ovaries are working, and you will often stop having your periods during and after treatment, but in many women it'll come back afterwards, and you'll go on to be fertile. And that's the case for the most common chemotherapeutic regimes that are used for the treatment of lymphoma. Some treatments can be more damaging, uh, and they can cause more permanent loss of eggs, or just bring the menopause a bit earlier, thus shortening the time that you might have available to have the family that you want. The other important aspect, of course, is that we think that the treatments you have don't have any damaging effect on the eggs themselves, so if you do fall pregnant, there's no reason to think that the baby you have is going to be affected and in any way abnormal because of the chemotherapy you might have had in the years gone by. The other key treatment modality for lymphoma is radiotherapy, and that, unfortunately, can have a significant effect on the ovaries and also potentially on the womb as well, on the uterus, which isn't really affected by chemotherapy. So this is if radiotherapy is delivered to areas that include the ovaries, so the pelvis, the lower abdomen, or even craniospinal irradiation where it's delivered to the lower spine, where a scatter dose can also affect your ovaries. And the radiotherapy can cause the loss of the non-growing eggs and the growing eggs and can cause an early menopause and the loss of fertility. And that's going to be very much dependent on the dose that your ovaries are going to get and your age at which you're going to get it. So again, these are details that you can discuss with your hematologist as to what the treatment they're giving you, uh, what they're planning on giving you, and whether this really is a risk to you or not. So radiotherapy can affect the pelvis if it's dire directly to the pelvis, but also, of course, if you have total body irradiation that's affecting the whole body, then that is going to include your ovaries as well. And that's often at a dose that really will, unfortunately, have a significant effect on the ovaries and cause you to lose a lot of your eggs. The dose that it involves generally also um, can affect the womb to cause scarring of the muscle tissue of the womb, which then limits its ability to grow during pregnancy and so the problems that has then is it increases the risk of losing the pregnancy, having a miscarriage, or delivering the baby prematurely. The newer therapies for lymphoma, the biological therapies, are things that we have much less information about as to whether they might affect fertility. They probably aren't as marked as traditional chemotherapy and radiotherapy, but essentially we really have not a lot of information as to whether they do have uh, adverse effects or not. So when the time comes that you want to have your family, I think it's important to remember that many women who've been treated lymphoma will be perfectly fertile and won't, shouldn't have any problems getting pregnant. Alternatively, of course, it's important to remember that infertility is very common in the general population. So it may be that you have a delay in getting pregnant that you would have had anyway. And it may be, of course, not you. It may be your partner hasn't got a great sperm count. And so it's nothing to do with the lymphoma. So, Ideally, of course, you'll be able to get pregnant naturally and there won't be a delay and things will work out. But if things aren't working out, then it's important that you get referred to the fertility clinic where they can look into things of why, whether there might be problems either with yourself or, of course, with your partner. For yourself, the main issue is going to be whether you're ovulating, releasing an egg every month, and that's going to be the key issue. 
For women who've gone through an early menopause as a result of their therapy, then the question will be, did, did they store any eggs, embryos, or tissue beforehand that they could then use? So if you were able to do that before you started your therapy and you then need to use it, you're probably already going to be on hormone replacement therapy. And then generally what treatment involves is really just adjusting that hormone therapy just a little bit to mean that your womb is ready to receive the embryo at the right time. So this will be in conjunction with what your IVF clinic are doing to look after you. They'll thaw out your egg or your embryo. If it's an egg, they will then fertilize that egg with your partner's sperm to make an embryo. And then that embryo can then be put into your womb, which is a very simple procedure, really not dissimilar to having a smear test taken. So very quick and easy. And then you'll carry on with your hormone treatment to help support and establish that pregnancy for the first three months or so of pregnancy. And then after that, you don't actually even need even that anymore. And the pregnancy will carry on as, it's a, as, as normal without any great problems. So that's if you've stored eggs or embryos. If you stored ovarian tissue before treatment, then, as I mentioned earlier, this is still a little bit experimental. But generally what it will involve is a further operation to put that tissue back in the pelvis where the ovary normally is. And generally speaking, most women who have that done will start to show some ovulation. The ovaries will get going again after about three months or so. And ideally, that will then help you get pregnant naturally without any further intervention. And indeed, of the women who've had babies after ovarian tissue replacements, probably about half of them have got pregnant naturally without any need for any further intervention. Sometimes if the clinic is worried that there are other issues, they may suggest you have IVF, whereupon that involves stimulating your ovaries with daily injections of hormones from the fertility clinic, taking the eggs from you, mixing them with your partner's sperm to make embryos that is then put back when the time is right. But ideally, of course, as I say, the putting the ovary tissue back will restore your own cycles and you'll be able to get pregnant naturally. If you haven't stored any of these tissues or cells beforehand and you have gone through an early menopause, then the key option for you is to consider egg donation. So this involves using another woman's eggs. So she will have gone through the first half of an IVF cycle on your behalf, stimulating her ovaries, removing the eggs from her, and they would then be fertilized using your partner's sperm to make embryos, which are then put back in you. And you would then carry that pregnancy, deliver the baby, and you would be the mother on the birth certificate, just as if it was naturally your own pregnancy and baby. If you don't go through that, the other options are for potentially um, adoption, which is something that's normally dealt with by your local council rather than the fertility clinic. Or sometimes if there are problems with the womb, there may be issues of needing surrogacy, where you get another woman to carry the pregnancy for you. And that obviously, as you imagine, gets quite complicated, but it generally involves using your eggs and your partner's sperm, but another woman to carry the pregnancy for you. And there are agencies that can help you deal with that and help that happen if that's what you end up needing.